I'm just telling you, if I was a squatch, that's in that shit I'd be in down there. <laughs> totally. That is thick. Oh, here comes the rain. And dark. Yep, it's raining. Look, we're going to get some pretty hardcore shit pretty quick. Yeah. I came up here and scouted this out. Should be good. I actually thought Joseph was up here by himself. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got eyes shine for up now. Oh, baby. Look, watch, watch, watch. Cool, I actually watch it. We arrived at the meet point late in the evening and decided to immediately make camp. With first light revealing the beauty of the Colorado Rockies, at 10,000 foot below Red Mountain, we prepared early to leave that morning to another location at higher altitude, closer to our main investigation areas. This would provide better access to the various locations we wish to check and as well increase our opportunity for contact. You'll notice the trees get smaller as we increase in elevation toward timberline. The high camp was selected and we'd immediately established our tent zone and camp area and spent that night making plans for the expedition the following day. The following morning we decided to get on the quads and conduct recon for a few miles surrounding the high base camp. The surrounding areas looked prime for Bigfoot activity, and it wasn't long before we found an object of interest. It was a 25-foot tree wedged in a group of other trees over 8 feet off the ground. The weaving was most impressive, and the fact that the trees would literally have to be spread apart to have inserted the tree, something that far beyond human capability to do so, and I doubt a truck hooked to it, could have pulled it out.
what we're doing here is this is an access we found that's kind of hidden oh, wow. behind the trees and you cannot see cannot see the access at all from out front After returning to camp, we decided to do some drone recon for the night's adventure. A long day's exploring left us all hungry for good food, and Chain didn't let us down. What you putting this together? This is sautéed bell peppers in three different colors, sautéed spinach, sautéed mushrooms, oh and some seared sirloin steak. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we got After eating and reviewing the drone video, a plan was made to recon the access road across from our camp area and use it to access the higher elevations up around 10,700 feet. And this is where things got good. Yeah, it went really well. Out of the conference? Out of the conference? Yeah, it went really well. Make the new yeah, some and got to rekindle. Uh, got to meet. Um, what's his name? Lyle Blackburn. First time got to hang out oh, with him. Yeah. Lyle yeah. seems I'd, like a nice guy. I'd like to meet that guy, actually. He, like he wants to go out and do stuff, so. We got. Kind of a stream way out from left. Left. Way out though. Way out. Like a, like a, a minute ago I thought I caught something, that's why I stopped and got quiet by that log. Same time? Yeah. But it but and everyone got real quiet and then I didn't hear anything. But it sounded way out there, but it didn't sound high pitch. Not not high, high. That's the, that's the hey guys. There's something hot. I got something hot in a tree over here. How far out? No, I didn't look very far out. Straight. Okay. Stay on it. I don't think it's very big, but can't tell how far in. How close to me? How high? Okay, because I got no eye shine. So he's saying it's a looks like a big bird. Don't don't go too far out. <clears throat> Copy that. That's too late. If you can't see ya. Bug. Saw a bug.
here behind me. We've had a couple sounds off to our left in the direction I'm looking now. You're getting quite a ways up, Joseph. These guys are going real slow. Sure, we're up at the top of the draw right now. Oh, you're not alone? No, we're together. Okay, copy that. I thought it was just you. You see this large X of logs <laughs> across the road? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, kind of like, like smaller groups, so it's a, we can be a little quieter. I actually thought Joseph was up here by himself. No. I was like, what the, whoa, 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 we got eyes shine from hell. Oh, baby, isn't that beautiful? Look, watch, watch, look at it. Come on, honey, look back out, there it is. Come on, look back out. Behind that big tree? It's right there. Tell them to stop. There it is, right there. Not the bug. Right there, there, see it? Yep, yep. Tell them to stop. Okay. Hold, you guys, hold. We got eye shine from about um, maybe a hundred feet off trail watching it now. Stop, stop, Turn stop, your radios stop. down, guys. Stop. Turn your radios down. Okay, I'm looking at the log. Okay, so we're watching eye shine. He's looking at me right now. Got a tree peeker about a hundred, hundred and ten feet away. What? Where is it in relation to the log? I don't even know where your log is. I'm looking at this thing. Log. Okay, how can I see it right there? I see a little better. Stop! Than I did. Stop! Stop! Hold position, please. I'm gonna go crazy. Now you guys should have held. Somebody up there. Yeah, I shine. I, I mean, was... nobody's going up there. Well, no, we were going to wanted to watch him for a minute. That's why I said hold position. <laughs> Nobody knew that part. Well, you guys should have probably held for him. Small groups, so it's a, we can be a little quieter. I actually thought Joseph was up here by himself. No. <laughs> oh. I was like, what the? Whoa, 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 whoa! We got I shine from hell. Oh, baby. Isn't that beautiful? Look, watch, watch, look at it. Come on, honey, look back out. There it is. Come on, look back out. Behind that big tree? It's right there. Tell them to stop. There it is, right there. Not the bug. Right there, there. See it? Yep, yep. Tell them to stop. Look. Hold, you guys, hold. We got eye shine from about um, maybe a hundred feet off trail watching it now. Stop, stop. Turn stop, your stop. radios down, guys. Stop. Turn your radios down. Okay, I'm looking at the log. Okay, so we're watching eye shine. He's looking at me right now. Got a tree peeker about a hundred, hundred and ten feet away. What? Where is it in relation to the log? I don't even know where your log is. I'm looking Before at this thing. Log. Okay, how can I see it right there? I see a little better. Stop! Than I stop! Did. Stop! Hold position, please. I'm gonna go crazy. Now you guys should have held. Somebody up there. Yeah, I shine. I, I mean, was... nobody's going up there. Well, no, we were going to wanted to watch him for a minute. That's why I said hold position. <laughs> Nobody knew that part. 
Well, you guys should probably help for him. In the tree or on the ground? No, he's he's standing on the ground, peeking around the tree. But not no more. Do you want to go up? No, he he ain't gonna be there. Let him he'll just, he'll just ghost you. Yeah, something parallels. You'll never get any good following him. They'll just ghost you. How far up was it, Robert? One hundred and twenty feet, one hundred and fifty feet. Behind that big tree. Oh shit! I saw it. Yes, I saw it. I saw it. Well, yeah. Okay. 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 Hold on, so what did it look like? Like, like what? Like what? Like what? Like what? Like what? It was getting real curious. That's why we were saying stop. It was peeking out more and more, it like it was going to come out. I saw it for a second. Yeah, I saw it. I don't see it now. It peaked, peaked kind of half around the ground. Can I back up there? Can you stop? Well, I think he might have gone down when you guys came. But he was walking out from behind, poking out from behind that tree. I thought he was going to come out. Yeah, he was. I probably got his head when I go back through this. And he just kept staring. He wasn't bugged. Hard to see. Did you hear that? Who's that? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's you. Oh. You're recording? I'm recording. Yeah. No, it's you just Robert. It? Yeah, I, I got it all. Right there. Right there. Yeah, I just, he's behind, he's behind foliage because I just got a glimmer through the foliage just now. He's still there. I just got a glimmer through the, through the foliage there. Right through it. He is. He won't be if we go up there. Best thing to do is just mellow out like a time like that. Don't everybody get excited and start running up here. So normally what our teams would do is just sit down, turn our back on him now, and just sit down and enjoy ourselves. And it'll come in 10, 12 feet from you if you let them. Probably already several feet. All right, well, I'm not going to bug him anymore. I know where he's at. We got to see what we got to see. He's not going to poke back out yet. Yeah, it was neat, man. It was neat. Oh, cool. I can actually watch your screen with this screen. Yeah. Yeah. Say again? With this night vision. Yeah, it's a nice rig. Upon wakening to a beautiful morning, it was found that the creature from the night before had apparently followed us back to base camp and left these 12 and a quarter inch tracks. It rained throughout the day, but we managed to keep them dry and did the best we could to cast them anyway. Cool. Well, this is the tricky part. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got a, um, a cast ready and we've had to pack, pour this in the really pouring rain. We've had rain all day long. Covered the cast, did the best we could to uh, recover this in real powdery ground. So before we start getting condensation moisture in the evening, we're going to have to get it out of here and try to keep it whole. So we'll take those off probably later. So we set our frame around it to try to frame it, and um, we're just kind of going to give her a little wiggle. The problem is we've got some grass in it. So in order to get the grass up, this is going to be a little, little tricky without breaking her. I might have to shave a little bit of that as we go. We'll see what, what happens. But it's going to want to try to pull that grass out by the roots, see? So it's a hit or miss. Now I know the track edge is in here, so I know I'm safe to go in and trim this one.
we go. Yeah. There we go. Came out pretty good. <clears throat> well, we've definitely got definitely got our outer edge showing, which is nice. We've got our taper showing. We don't know what we're going to have for any definition until we let it set up and we can brush this off. But yeah, the overall the overall thing is absolutely there. We're good. You can edit those out, right? Uh, nope. That's nope. going in, You're Devin. going raw video. That. Well, I can take it out. If that was blue. So. All right, so. I don't want to embarrass blue. That's, that's, that's going to be what we've got for now. And I can already see we've got a little, at least a toe here and a toe there. The front was kind of messed up where the big toe slid, so. But we've got our arch here, here. You see, you can see the, the structure of the foot. This is a fifth metal tarsal. That's the raise to the fifth metatarsal. This is the ball. That's the right angle. Um, this is your mid tarsal break, first line, second yeah, line. Showing up. Huh? Yeah, everything looks like it's going to do pretty good. I mean, it's a little vague because it was in the powder and we had to pour it the way we had to pour it, but see what happens when we get the dirt off of it. I call that a win so far, guys. We started the next day with another series of drone recon flights, this time in search of ponds, wetlands, and other water resources. Water holdings like this are key congregation points for all the animals of the forest, and we can expect the same thing for Bigfoot. So again, we utilize the quads to gain access to the higher elevations where the marshlands exist. Okay, so here we got some black bear prints, and what you notice was where I was showing before. I was showing you the the muddy prints here in the water, and you can see down through the water, see where the fog mud is. Yeah, those are steps within just the last maybe 30 minutes, mm -hmm. and then um, we get over here, and we can see the culprit who walked across there. Is a uh, looks like a black bear, more than likely. There you go. I don't really see where he, oh yeah, there we go. He went right there. He's staying real close to the tree, staying trust out of the mud. So yeah, he's in here somewhere. Yeah. So we're actually still looking for the main pond. Um, so I haven't been able to actually knock that out yet. So here pretty quick. Um, pretty quick, we'll get on it and uh, we're going to make an arc to the south. Now the other guy split off. Check the northward arc, and they're already back over at our meeting point. So we're going to arc further south now and try to eliminate that possibility. Nothing else. We'll get back to the quad, so the drone back up. So uh, we're, we're using standard compass. This would have been a done deal. Electronic compass keeps swinging 10 degrees, 15 degrees. So uh, it's kind of a shot in the dark. 
anyway, that's that's the culprit. So I came up here and scouted this out. Should be good. Nice. So we're trying to weasel our way through this bog. See, it's all, you can see the water or not, but it's all, this is all swamp or bog. Okay. <laughs> Your dog's eyes are awesome. Hi, buddy. All right, this is the this is the access where we um, made the drone flight through. Finally, got the quad up here, or we're getting the quads up here. You can tell these are no, the no trails here. This is just. Hey, this way we're going? Okay. Sweet. Okay. To your left a little. Right here. Come on to me. You got it. So, so this is what a fire, a roaring fire looks like on the spectrum analyzer. Go for Robert. Now we just did our radio check. Copy that. You're scrambly, but still sound good. <whistles> so that was me. We often attempt whistles to see if we can get a response, and this time we did. We can hear the response whistles better by selecting each one of them individually and then applying amplification.
While sitting alone by the fire and monitoring the parabolic mic, something was thrown into camp. Not only can you hear the impact, but the throw as well. And again, by amplifying the selected region, we can literally hear the arm moving through the air. We bedded down about 11.30 p.m., but left the parabolic dish and other units running just to see if anything of interest may happen through the night. In the morning, we would find out just how interesting things actually got. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Have a sleep. Ah, oh, decent. Hey, baby. Hey, 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 you slept pretty good because that alarm went off last night. Oh, the We're not just sitting off. But the light and everything. The siren? Fuck yeah. And then right after it stopped. How long was it ringing for? Five, ten minutes? Well, whatever it was. Just a few minutes. <laughs> no, it looks like... It's like five minutes. Five minutes. minutes. So to me it, it felt like ten, but right after it stopped, I woke up in a crack, right? There was a crack, a crack, and like, and then the thing went off, and it was like, <laughs> and I'm thinking you're going to be kidding. Now, I thought maybe you had tipped it, and then it went off, I guess, five minutes, I'm waiting, and within like less than five seconds or ten seconds after it stopped, I heard a grunt. I, it was like, Whoosh. like it was pissed off. That, well, that it went off. And then I realized after, like I, I thought I could hear him once, but it sounded different. So I thought it was multiple different ones. And he was farting, <laughs> right? But the very first one was a grunt and it was different. It was deeper. Yeah. And I'm like, I could hear the... I didn't know how long did it figure out But you know what? I don't even you, know what? Shit. you don't even have to believe me. Yeah, that was recording the entire time. That that recorder. So right. you'll be, you'll oh, hey, go stop that recording. Oh, right. yeah. Yeah, you're going to hear it. You, you'll Did you check and see if that was on? It was on. I actually walked out. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm thinking, That's man, they're not going to believe me. I, I saw the recorder right there. And I'm like, how the fuck did you not get this? <laughs> because it's pretty loud. I was so tired. And it was, it was like lights, the lights were going on. So it had it flashes? The motion sensor alarm was positioned directly behind my bivy tent. And you had to be within 10 feet to set the unit off. A review of the audio showed this grunt just before the event took place. Again, we select the region and amplify the sound. Just moments later, we see and hear the stick snap that awoke Jason. And we see in the recording a breath before the alarm goes off. By selecting only the region of the breath, we can listen to it over and over and watch it on the graph below each time without amplification. By then selecting the exact region of the loudest exhale, it's revealed that it's actually a low moan.
And here we see the grunt that Jason mentioned just four minutes after the alarm stopped sounding. Again, we will amplify the region so we can hear the grunt much clearer. At this point in the expedition, four people left, leaving only Shane and I for the last couple of days to complete the recon and see what we could find. These high alpine meadows were almost never ending, but it was determined we should head north, an opposite direction that we had gone the entire expedition thus far, to another set of marshy lakes up on top near Timberline. These are basically wetlands. <clears throat> this will all be marsh plants and bog plants. We're just coming up through around the uh, backside of our of our ponds and stuff, and I made a bone find and another bone find over there. Got to be cattle from the size of it, I'd say. It's got to be. That's massive. Check the uh, bite imprint and see what we got. First off, 
we're going to look for canine gnaw marks on where the cartilage would be. We're going to look for canine marks the length of the bone, which I don't see any yet. I do see what looks like hominid biting. There doesn't seem to be any scraping from canine, but something impacted the bone and broke the whole thing open to get to the marrow without scratching or scraping it. And you can see some damage all the way around the top where the whole upper knuckle edge has been taken out. But it looks, oh, those look similar to big hominid bites on that end. And um, I don't see any canine or bear or any other normal predator mark, but something even smashed and fractured that bone to get the marrow out. So let's look at this other one here. Screen, come on. Okay. Okay, let's see, we got similar. Look at that damage is almost identical. Something has trimmed out all that, bit that off. No canine or bear marks at all. <clears throat> bit, took this entire knuckle out. No canine or bear marks at all on the joint where the cartilage would be. And then something impacted the bone and removed the marrow. There you go. These are excellent pieces. Amazing, because they're both the same technique was used. Exact technique was used on both of these bones. And they're the opposing. If you look, see the impacts to the bone. The way this stuff's been removed. Same. Open it up the side, open it up the side, same. So show those to Tara. She knows she's got a BS in this stuff, so and that doesn't mean bullshit. That means a bachelor of science. <laughs> Almost want, I almost want to bring those back. These are really good and very definitive. So you don't get things that break and fracture. Took, like took a rock or something to fracture that. And yeah, nothing out here does that. Hey, Shane. <clears throat> come here and look at these. So. The fact that there's no bear gnaw marks on them. There's no cat. There's no anything. But there is large impacts on both of them with the same knuckle being removed. I mean, they're pretty oxidized, but... Yep. So, progressing. Come to this. So, we always look for these bleached, stripped poles, leaning. Then we come on this one. And we've got two of the bleached poles forming a real pretty X. And this is right in line with all these down trees that I was just tracking. Pretty cool. I mean, you never know, but they look like they're just set there. That's pretty good. Let's go down this way, Shane. You see what I see? There's a very dark shadow right there. I don't know what that is. Probably just that, just a shadow. Somewhere down here will be camp someplace. Oh, 
Yeah, it looks like we're on track, I believe. Hoping something just jumps out for the camera. I actually saw the little guy earlier today. Didn't have the freaking camera on, man. Well, it was 8.30 in the morning. I would shut off all the camp monitoring cams because at 8.30 in the morning, honestly, why would you just have them sitting there running? So, uh, I shut off all the monitoring cams at 8.30, like I said. Quarter to 11, I'm sitting in a chair. And I look up. Uh, I'm sitting at the fire and 100 feet away at the same gap that I had cammed for them to come last night. There's about a coffee brown, but light, a little bit lighter, you know, but the coffee ground, grounds, a little lighter brown uh, subject. Standing there in the gap and took off to the left like a flash. And so I went over, I thought, well, it's a deer, right? And I saw it though, I thought it was three or four foot high. I thought, well, that's a deer. And then, um, but when I got my phone, put the copy down, got the phone, kind of cut it off. It should be standing there and never heard a thing after that. And it should have made a lot of noise. And um, and it that's what it did. It snapped a stick to begin with. And it wasn't there. It was gone and not a mark from a deer. And if there was a single scuff, I would have said deer. But then when Shane came down, he walked down there. I sat in the same perspective. And it was it, where, where it looked like it was three or four feet tall where it passed through uh, was right at the top of his head and he's six foot so so it was a six foot light coffee brown uh, like almost like cinnamon a little more brown um, subject and yeah he, he blipped but nothing caught him so and not a drag Yeah, it is. It's awesome. I gotta try to navigate a fairly smooth trail for the pup back here and still keep aligned to where we're going. Fallen trees. They're okay if they're not too bad. Oh, here we go. We'll go around this tree. You can go around the base of this tree pretty easy for him.
Tell you what. I don't know. See these dead trees? And then you got, there's quite a few of them all kind of over. None of them are laying down. See, dead tree. tree. Dead tree, dead tree, dead tree, dead tree. Look here, giant green tree, healthy, ripped out, rocks exposed, whole huge root ripped out of the rocks. And then you've got this one. I mean, look at this thing. The roots have been tore and tore the rocks up. It literally lifted the bedrock out to pull those roots out. And this tree's perfectly green and healthy. And everything around it is standing up yeah. dead wood. We could damn near shove over by hand. I mean, this is nuts. See, there's a live aspen shoved over. Tell by the way it splintered, it wasn't brittled yet. That's a pretty incredible sign. Yeah, so we're, we haven't really, we haven't seen, uh, we have really haven't seen too much track or sign or stick brake sign or any of that stuff. Um, we saw a track down below. We saw a track at camp, um, but not up here. But we are seeing a lot of sign that's maybe, you know, you know, maybe a week old at the most, like these trees. And they can walk all over this without leaving sign. And then we've had rain every single day, pouring rain every single day. So anything that they may have left here, I mean, this ground, you can see this ground is, is you know, basically rock with dirt mixed in it, and it'll support weight. So, so any, kind, any kind of activity in the last over a week old be really difficult to find. And yet we keep consistently finding these shoved over green trees, perfectly healthy green trees. Like this. And they're... And they're really tore out, exposing a lot of roots. So they were holding in well. There's so many trees that would come out before these things do. And they're in random directions. They're not on the same direction. There's just not been that many horrific storms up here to have done this. I mean, look at this one. This is a huge, huge look, it tore all the rock out again and all the roots out. And that's a massive tree. And yet we can see big dead trees over there that should just come right out and they're still just standing there with no problem so matter of fact the only dead one I see down is this one here so, I mean there's tree falls are great and they're totally normal which usually makes sense there's a certain logic to them so our last night there was no less eventful I bedded down about 11.30 p.m., and about an hour later, my visitor returned. A video of the bone finds was sent to Tara Larson, BS Anthropology, Archaeology. She determined that the bone was most likely from a cow, and that the articulating or distal end was half bitten off, and that the media Epicondyle and greater trochanter were both either bitten away or had the connective tissues ripped from the bone. She said that the mid-shaft on both bones appeared to be broken by impact, possibly for an effort to remove the marrow. An impact as if placed on a rock and hit with another rock. And although there are tooth marks, they do not resemble any recognized predator or scavenger. With the closest, being that of a large hominin type 